my name is Jonathan Hicks. We're doing Pythagoras problems. Now, I've done another video on Pythagoras' theorem and how it works, what it is, and I gave you a very quick example in that video on how to use it. But in this one, I'm going to go into more depth. I'm going to show you some of the other kinds of problems that they can ask you to do with Pythagoras' theorem and how you would solve them. So if you don't know what Pythagoras' theorem is at all, go and watch the Pythagoras' theorem video first and then come back here. All right, so first problem, um, we've got a right angle triangle, as always. This is just going to be a very simple problem just to get us going in the first place. So imagine the length of this side is 3 and the length of this side is 5 and we want to find out the length of the hypotenuse, the longest side. They usually like to call it x. So as we saw in Pythagoras' theorem video, you want to square the two shorter sides, add them together and that will give you the longer side squared. So I could say that x squared, the length of the longest side, is going to be 3 squared plus 5 squared, yeah? Because this area of the square that would appear on this side is going to be 3 squared. The area of the square here would be 5 squared, and that will give us the area of the square here, which would be x squared, whatever the length is. We don't know what it is yet. When you square it, that will give you the area of that square. So the areas of the two smaller squares always add to give the area of the bigger square. Now in this case, that means that x squared is going to be 9 plus 25, which means 9 plus 25 gives you 34. Now if x squared is 34, and we want to get back and find out what x is, we do the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting. So you need to square root both sides, that will tell you what x is. And in this case, it's the square root of 34, which we'll need our calculator for. And we find out that it is 5.8 to one decimal place. Do be careful, with Pythagoras questions, the answer is usually a long decimal number and you will have to round it. They'll probably tell you in the question how many decimal places or maybe significant figures to use when rounding, but you must round it correctly or you're going to lose a mark there. Go and watch the rounding to decimal places and significant, videos, uh, significant figures videos if you want to know more about that, but do make sure you round correctly. So that's the general idea. Find out the areas of those two squares, you add them to get the area of the big square, and then square root it to find the length on that side. Now that's all very well if they've given you the lengths on the two shorter sides, but what if they haven't? What if you're trying to find out the length of that side, or we'll keep this one as 3, and they tell you that the length of this side now is 7? And we've got to work out how long this side is. Now it's more or less the same thing, but you just have to be a bit careful because now the two smaller sides, one of them we don't know. So that's just going to change the way we write this down a bit. So if we get rid of that one, now the 7 squared is going to be the thing that's by itself. So we've got 3 squared, the area of the square that would be here, plus x squared, we don't know what x is yet, when you add those together, you're going to get the area on this side, the square on this side, so that's going to be 7 squared. So work out what you know. So 3 squared is 9, and 7 squared is 49. Now, if you're familiar with algebra, you can just move the 9 over, it becomes a minus 9, you work it out. If you're not, don't worry about it. Effectively, we're saying that when you add these two together, you get 49. So this one has got to be 49 minus the 9. It's got to be the difference. Because the difference between them when you add it to 9 has got to add up to the 49. So x squared, the area of the square on this side that we still don't know yet, has got to be the total area, the area of the big square, minus the one on this side. So it's going to be minus the 9. Now 49 minus 9 just gives you 40. So again, to work out the length of the x, you just have to square root both sides. So if you square root a squared, you just get back to x. And if we square root 40, again on the calculator, we're going to get 6.3. So this time, the length of the shorter side here needs to be 6.3 centimeters. Again, I've rounded that to one decimal place. 
All right, so that's how you find out the length of a shorter side. It's exactly the same, except you need to subtract the shorter one from the longer one in this case. So whereas previously you'd work out the areas of the two shorter sides, the squares, and add them together, now because you know the length of the bigger one, you have to subtract the area of the smaller square from the area of the big square, and that will leave you with the other one. And then you can square it to find the length. So that's how you do it in that situation. Uh, but imagine they gave you a different kind of triangle where there wasn't even any right angle triangle. Pythagoras' theorem only works for right angle triangles. So if you don't have a right angle triangle, but you're expected to use Pythagoras, you have to create one somehow. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine you had an equilateral triangle. So all three sides are the same length and all the angles are the same. And they wanted you to find the height of the triangle. So we'll call that H for the height of the triangle. They tell you that the length of one of the sides on the triangle, which is the same for all three sides, is let's say 10. And we want to find out, as I say, the height there. Now, at the moment, in an equilateral triangle, there are no right angles. But as soon as we think about the height there, we can actually make a right angle triangle there. And you've got one on either side. But if you just forget about the left and look at the right hand side, you've got a right angle triangle there. And sometimes you need to do that. You need to split up your triangles to create right angle triangles. Now we can start to think about how we could use Pythagoras. Well, this side is an equilateral triangle, so it's got to be the same as that side. So this side must have a length of 10, the diagonal there. Now the width at the bottom here, you need to be careful of. It's not 10, that would be the distance all the way across. It's going to be halfway along here. The vertex, the top of the equilateral triangle, will always drop right down to the halfway point here. So if it's 10 all the way across, then the length of the bit that we're interested in on our right angled half here is going to be 5. So now we can use Pythagoras' theorem, just as before, except we're going to have an h instead of an x. So h squared, now this is one of the shorter sides. The longest side opposite the right angle is the 10. So the h squared plus the 5 squared will give us the 10 squared. Again, work out what you know. So 5 squared gives you 25, 10 squared gives you 100. And now again, because we're wanting the short side, we need to subtract these two. We're going to move the plus 25 over here and it becomes a minus 25. Oops, missed off the squared. So the h squared then is going to be the 100 minus the 25. Yeah, the area of the bigger square minus the area of one of these will give us the area of the square that would sit on the side where the height is. So 100 minus 25 is 75. And again, we do square root to find the value of the length. So h will be the square root of 75. So reading from my calculator, h is going to be 8.7 to one decimal place. And that's how you do it. So do be careful with those triangles. You can do a similar thing with isosceles triangles. That means you've got two sides the same length. And again, if you split it in half, you can make a right angle there. So just be aware of that. They do throw that in as sort of harder Pythagoras questions.